Good morning, Saturday morning. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, in the description box below, there's a link. You can click on that link and help us out. It'd be greatly appreciated. This morning, we're not going to start on the truck just yet because uh, we're going to go to uh, Cars and Coffee. Stay tuned for that on the midweek video. And uh, that'll be then, and we'll talk trucks and cars and all that kind of stuff on the midweek video. But for now, we'll bid you adieu, and we'll talk to you guys right after we get back. Later. All right. So let's get started on this. What I'm doing is I'm trying to set this as, as close to ride height as possible. This is actually more closer to laid out. The rear end will come down a little bit more because of the uh, leaf spring hangers right there. Once those are cut off, this this part of the frame will lay on the ground. So I don't have that just yet. The exhaust underneath is going to end up running running into the ground as well. There's a lot of stuff that needs to get done, but the main cross member for the transmission and the uh, torsion bars is going to hold it off the ground as well. And then the front cross member, of course, that always ends up holding it off the ground. So the reason I'm doing this is so that I can figure out exactly where I want my ride height to be. This is the way I do it. A lot of guys would say, no, you've got to have that, I don't know, direct center or whatever. I don't get into all that technical mumbo jumbo. I put it together and it works. That's just how I do it, how I've always done it. So I'm gonna set mine at ride height because I'm doing a reverse four link. You have to, it, the, the geometry is completely different than doing a regular four link from the front back, okay? So I'm gonna do it my way, and we're gonna set this at where I want it. A lot of people say, how do you work on an unlevel ground? Well, the ground is unlevel, so I will build it unlevel. Whatever this ground is, I'm gonna measure the ground and see what the angle is. I will put the same angle on my pinion. That way it's level with whatever ground I'm on. And I'll show you that here in just a second. But I've got the pinion close to where it's going to be. I think it needs to be up just a hair farther. And uh, I need to get my, my pinion measure and check that out real quick. All right. Let's get down here and look at this level. It's not far off. It's probably about two degrees. See there? Two degrees is what this is off. So what we'll do is that's that will be our zero. Two degrees is zero. So when we set it on our pinion, we gotta find a level spot. I can use the top of this. See? Get it close to there. We're off a lot. So that means we gotta sit here and mess with this just a hair. Hang on. All right, messed with it and messed with it. And now we're sitting at about two degrees. Right there. So now the top of this is actually sitting level. I'm gonna check it a little bit more just to make sure. Measure, measure, measure. When it's on camera, it's a little bit harder for me to sit here and mess with it indirectly. So I'm gonna make sure that it's exactly where it needs to be. And we'll set it up at about zero. Uh, well, zero as to what two degree is, is at zero. And then that's where we're going to set it. We'll start making our measurements to center the axle exactly where it needs to be. <clears throat> and, uh, the uh, carrier bearing is going to prohibit it from moving forward and backwards. But because your carrier bearing flexes a little bit, that's, what's going to carry you all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom. Cause remember the axle is going to move this way and then this way like that well the problem with that is if it moves too far it's going to start ripping your carrier bearing that's why at ride height that has to be centered your axle has to be probably pretty much at center of how far up it's going to go and how far down it's going to go otherwise any further and you're going to start stretching out your uh, carrier bearing and you're going to rip it to shreds and then you're going to it's just yeah it's not good so let me play with this a little bit more and uh, then I'll get back with you guys. That's what we do. 
All right, I'm actually not boring you guys with a lot of work. I'm, I'm starting to get used to this thing. This thing actually cuts through the steel a little bit faster and easier than the grinder does, or the angle grinder. Uh, this is, like I said, about right height, and then these will be cut off, but that's about where I'd like to be able to skate going down the road, which leaves the cross members in the front probably about two inches off the ground, three inches off the ground, and not much, but that would be just about the lowest we'd be able to ride. I've kind of got this mocked up. I still need, I actually need to cut these out just a little bit. Uh, for the record, somebody uh, on Facebook really has a misunderstanding. These are not forklift bars. This is uh, actually uh, uh, stock solid steel that is half inch thick by four inches wide, but they did not come off of a forklift. <laughs> I think it's fucking hilarious. How people don't watch the whole video and they don't realize that there's a little bit more to what they're trying to say so no they're not from a forklift butch joked with me and said fuck you get those off of a forklift so that's where that came from so yeah uh i do need to cut off about four inches off of these so these i have to adjust as well i've already adjusted these to the length that i want them uh the tab mounts, I cut them shorter to make them where I want them to mount. They're going to mount on either side like this. And then the rear bars are going to end up hooking up to the bottom down there underneath it. And then, of course, I'm going to reinforce the front and the back of this whole center section. Because there's going to be a lot of force right there in the center. So I want to have good strength going on on that. As far as the lower link bars, a lot of people, again, you guys are getting ahead of me. I need to know where these are going to mount before I drill a hole. And then I'm going to go ahead and reinforce them on the bottom. I want them to look like flat bars on top, but they will have a rib down the center and underneath. And then I'm going to have also support going around where the bolt hole is going to go through on these yes the bag is going to mount on top flat and then i'll have the bag mount up here coming out and that's where they're going so they're going to go from the center point here on the back of the truck and they're going to go under the axle actually under the frame over into that corner so they're going to be at a hard of an angle as i can get all the way back but i want my bars as long as possible that way it'll be able to have a little bit of articulation. These bars are quarter inch thick. They did not come from sprinkler or fence or whatever everybody's trying to talk shit about. They're quarter inch thick, steel hard bars, and they are welded in. And they, I mean, there's literally, I can stand on these and there's virtually no flex at all. On my first bag truck, I uh, had a reverse four link on it and it had one by one squared and never had a problem that truck drove everywhere so if you're right in the middle of this i hope you're watching this because go tell your friends the bottom tab mounts are the same length that they came from uh roadie and the front ones are the same length from roadie i did cut the front ones down made them a little bit shorter so that they'll fit underneath this when it lays out, I've, I need another two to three inches up. So I wanted to make sure I didn't have to cut this back bar because I'd like to use that back bar for something else to mount stuff on or whatever. But everything's going to fit the way it sits. And now you got a really good idea of how this four is going to go together. I'm going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Whew, this camera makes it look a whole lot lighter than what it really is out here. Um, I had a delay. My welding hood ended up having a wire come loose so i had to take it apart and uh get that soldered back on so that the power could get back into the lens and uh that slowed me down probably about a half an hour or so but i got the upper link bars tacked in i'm gonna try to get out here first thing in the morning they're just tacked i got one tack on either side just to hold them in place uh, that way i can go ahead and take all this out of here <laughs> And they'll stay up there. I still haven't cleaned all this up. I also got the upper bag mounts in. Uh, have not gusseted them. 
<laughs> so don't start saying that I haven't gusseted them because they're not gusseted. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to gusset them as soon as I, as soon as I can. Um, I centered up the axle and got everything all put together in a way that I've got it wedged on both sides so that it can't move back and forth. I've got everything centered from left to right and I measured straight up to the front and to the center of the axle to make sure it is as straight and square as possible to the front of the truck. And with me not having laser guided and adjustable link ends and all that, 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 that kind of adds to it. Eventually, maybe we'll go ahead and upgrade if we need to. If not, then we'll just leave it the way it is. But uh, hopefully tomorrow morning, I, I'd like to get all this back out here and go ahead and get those tacked in. My wife's got dinner almost done, so I'm going to go inside and eat dinner. And one of the dogs just got attacked by a cat. <laughs> I want to I thank everybody for reaching out to me and being concerned about what's going on with the lower link bars. I have an idea. I have a plan. I'm going to reinforce it. It's going to be safe. Don't worry about that. Please let me finish and then you can guys can blow up after that. But first, please see my vision before I get when when I get it done. I, I just I really want to get that part of it done. So, all right, until the morning. All right, good morning. It is actually like almost nine or so. Uh, recalculated and measured. I had to bring them down to three foot four inches. Three foot four inches to center of the link end, which is where that's going to be. Now, remember, you have to account this is two inches. So, to center would be an inch from the outside edge to end. So this is actually sitting at three foot, three inches from center here all the way to th that edge there. Cause another inch would be three foot four and that would make it to center of your link end. So that's what I'm doing there. Oh, <clears throat> quick tip <clears throat> when you weld around your metal, if you keep a piece of flat steel you can actually, for the most part, scratch all of your slag off, especially if it's not finished. Because this, this slag's not welded on. It's just basically barely burnt onto the surface of the metal, and you can just clean it up like that. And then give yourself a regular sanding and then clean it off with acetone and then plain, and then paint it. A lot of people ask about the acetone. Well, well, the acetone, the thinner, almost like, it's almost like rubbing alcohol on your window to put a sticker on. It's cleaning off all the impurities, all of the uh, oil and all the other crap that's on there that prohibits the sticker from sticking. Well, that also prohibits paint or have you ever been writing on a piece of paper and it won't write in one spot because your greasy finger was there same thing you want to get all the impurities off of it so when i get ready to paint these i will but right now i'm gonna make another measurement get this one cut my hands are killing me because i'm using angle grinders and that's what happens because when you don't use your hands enough uh you, you get arthritis <laughs> So I'm going to finish this up and uh, my wife's making breakfast. She should be really close to being done. I'm hungry. In case you guys are actually wondering, yeah, this is breakfast. I'll be right back out there to finish this video here in just a minute. <laughs>
I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and measure across the uh, three foot three inches. And I'm going to put that to center of the bolt on that side. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. I'm going to put this to center. To, there we go. Three foot three inches. Uh, right there. I'm going to take my square. Bring it over here. Make a mark. Drop that again. Get in here and start my cutting that. how much longer it was than I, than I needed it. Put that down there and then now we're going to flip this onto its side. Take this out of there. Again, the way I build, I'm going to eyeball this. I'm also going to go about a sixteenth of an inch in. That way I can round my welds off. Is that right? Yep. Then... I'm going to take my square again, measure up four foot, I mean four inches, up to there, and then we're going to make a line that I'll cut again, so four inches. Like I said, this is just for looks. It's not an exact science. I gotta figure out where the hell I made that mark. There it is. Light's hitting it just right, making it look funky. There. Time to get a new blade. That one's wore out. And this is why it looks like a forklift blade. Because I'm cutting it down.
Uh, I still got to do this side real quick, but I'm going to have to be on this side to be able to do that. But I'm also doing a little bit of fish mouth on this. That's why I'm cutting into the edge right there is so that this will actually set in right there. So when I weld it, it'll weld the way it's supposed to. That's about as good as that's gonna get. I did notch into it just a hair right there, but I'm not gonna grind it down because I don't want to take away from the actual steel that was originally there. So now that's nice and about as round as I can get it. And uh, like I said, I'm not gonna use this side. I'll end up using this side. And then when I reinforce it, I'll end up having a piece that's gonna overlay this just a little bit to make it look good. Look at that. This is why you wear gloves. Otherwise, that would have been my fingers. A lot of time for me to get some new gloves, huh? <laughs> All right, I wanted to show you guys. I, I did it before, showing you again. The space right here, I want that to be centered with the space right here so that it's centered on that link end when I weld it together. And then I put this piece of metal here. Now. The other thing is, is because I made this stand, it's metal to metal to metal to metal, so you can ground it wherever, as long as you have a metal platform, that actually becomes partly my welding table. Let me get this set up over here. And then we'll cut to me welding. Oh, yeah, and she's right here, right here. <laughs> I can't help with this. I know you can't help with this, baby. All right, let's cut to me welding. All right, making some final measurements. We're gonna get the bags on here and make sure that everything is lined up. Uh, you know how to use that. I might sound like a stupid question. I'm sorry, yes. I, you haven't used one of those in a long time. So I'm just making sure. And I gotta measure this out. The center, just to make sure. I've got a mark on top. So I want to make one more mark just to make sure. 41, so I need 20 and a half and a quarter. 20 and a half and a quarter. Side. I thought you were going to do it. You're in the way. <laughs> oh. Okay. This is why we have not reinforced the bags just yet. Or reinforced those bottom link bars because where the center hole is on this, that's going to be the mounting point. We need to put the lower link bars on 
center them up with that so we know exactly where the hole is going to go on these before we start making our reinforcements. to where I think this is going to be. That, that looks really good. Is the butthole in the right place? <laughs> 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 yeah, we got to make sure that the butthole is in the right spot. <laughs> oh. Okay. Make sure these are centered. are centered. Make sure this is centered. Make sure our bars are up where they need to be. And unfortunately, this is where we're going to have to end this because I don't have time. It's noon and I have to leave to go to work. So I have to gather all my shit together, not take a shower and be stinky the rest of the week. <laughs> so here we are. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. We're going to get these lower link bars mounted up next weekend. I'm going to throw a tarp over these because it's supposed to rain tomorrow. And I really don't want to have a whole lot of freaking rust next weekend. There's going to be some mild rust, but I just I don't want it to build up too heavy. Uh, comment at the bottom. Uh, give me your thoughts on what's going on here. We're going to clean all this up, and i got to get out of here. See you guys later. Go build your trucks. Get out there. I'm tired of seeing your shit not done. <laughs>